We have covered a lot of ground with boxing. It's probably not the most fascinating topic of C-sharp that's in any of my C-sharp playlists, but it's also important to understand why we need to box. You know, generally, if you declare a variable locally on the on the stack, then the stack's where it's stored, but then it can get boxed out and boxed in, and that makes extra copies and puts some workload on the garbage collector to make sure to compress the heap, but also clean up the heap if we leak those box references out. Anyway, back when .NET first came out, boxing was a much more know, hotter topic, if hot is the right word for it. It's one that was in everybody's forefront. And the reason why is because .NET originally released without generics. I believe the story was marketing really wanted to get .NET out the door. Generics weren't ready. Let's ship it. And then all of a sudden we don't have generics. So how do we make containers that can store anything? Well, I know everything inherits from objects. So let's have containers store object. And then you can put anything in a container. But unfortunately, once you say object, then now your containers are going to that store value types, which they often do. It's often have a container store ints or chars or bools or whatever. Uh, then all of a sudden all those instances get put out on the heap and it becomes very expensive very quickly. I remember I was actually uh, programming .NET when all this went down using system.collections and then we used to say array list me list gets new array list and if we wanted to store ints inside of the array list we'd say me list dot and and here's a five sure and me list dot and you know, 13 and we'd get this data for maybe it's from a database or user input or who knows what but we'd have all this data and we would store these um, values in it like so and if you look at the signature for the add function it takes an obj ect Right, that's a compile time type. The runtime type is, hey, this is an int, but the compile time type is obj ect, which is the same as saying obj ect o gets 99. And I've shown how this creates a box out on the heap. Right, o is a reference on the stack, but 99 is out on the heap. Anyway, same concept there. When you pass a value in for uh, a parameter, it's, it's the same as assignment. And so now all of a sudden I have to box 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 all these all three of these values get boxed and if you're dealing with thousands of little ints or chars or booleans or whatever they are uh, ints generally then you've just created a lot of boxes thus this made boxing at, uh, put it at the forefront of everybody's mind now when generics came out in version 2 I remember everyone was like oh generics and it's funny when a new technology comes out or a new scheme or a new way of doing things like, oh, it's so awesome, Jamie, look at, oh, it's just like, come on, I've been around the block a few times, you know, we, we had templates in C++, what's so special, well, in .NET, yeah, they were actually special, because all of a sudden, now I don't need to box, and if you go read, or read, <laughs> if you go watch my uh, generics programming playlist, uh, you know, you'll get a, you'll get comfortable with generics, let me um, bring in, using system dot collections dot ooh we got this in version two generics oh so awesome and look at me throw a var on there already let me do list int me list gets new well I can't do me list I already have me list up here don't I let's do me list two gets new new list of int and now I can say me list well look at this I'm just going to copy paste because that's what professional programmers do they'll copy and paste, right? Alt drag to um all right, well now look at add here. Add takes an int. Instead of up here it takes an object. Well now that it takes an int, it no longer has to box and it literally stores the int as is inside the underlying array. So yeah with with value types we have to copy this value into this parameter still and then inside of the list, maybe I'll do a playlist on on uh, containers and things, but inside the list it'll copy that in directly into the underlying array for the list, but nothing's put out directly on the heap as a box. Alright, in fact, let me just, let me 
let me just kind of demonstrate a little bit. Let me get my uh, drawing program open. And, oh, look at that. It's kind of taking up part of the screen. Let's bring that up there. We'll go blue, thinner. So this array list, un uh, underlying in the array list, and what I mean by underlying is there is an array under this thing that has to actually store these values. And so inside of this array list, you'll see, if we were to peer into it, you would see uh, object array items. Okay, it gets new object array, and it would start out with 10, and, and the algorithm would grow it as necessary. But now that I have this object array items, all right, if I wanted to, like the the array list, its add function would look very much like item sub zero. Let's fill up the first item. Gets five, right? The value coming in here. Well, item stores objects, right? So items is this array. I'm going to reduce this down to five. So items is this array of references. Okay, there's five of them. So I'm not quite sure why I drew my race along. One, two, three, four, five. Let me erase the extras off the end here. Like so. And so when I say item sub O gets five, or item sub zero <laughs> gets five, we'll say this is zero here. Zero, one, two, three, four. Well, well this arrays out on the heap. So here's my stack, like I've drawn a hundred million times. Here's the heap out here and the array is out on the heap but now this 5 it has to be boxed in order for this reference this reference here to reference it so let's put 5 in a box a new object out on the heap and, all, and more objects on the heap mean that the garbage collector has to manage more objects and that location in memory has to reference that boxed object Okay, and so on and so forth. Let's do items. Maybe I, well, I do add 13. So let's do items sub 1 gets 13. And again, pretend pretend this is the code that's wrapped away and hidden inside of this array of this class. Well, items sub 1 getting 13. Well, okay, let's box the 13 up. So here's the 13. All right, 13. And then we will reference. This is a reference here. This cell in here in the array is a reference, referencing the 13, then oh, Nelly, they added an 18. Let's item sub 2 gets 18. All right, well, here's here's 18 out on the heap, wherever it wants to be. You know, here's the extra meta info of the box. And we reference it like so. Okay, and so if we have like thousands of these, oh, that's bad. That's, that's not very, that's not a very optimal situation. Now let's compare this situation with, uh, the list here. So I'm going to maybe I'm push this up like that, get our screen real estate a little bit. So this list now can store the objects or the values directly instead of having to do this referencing thing in, in these boxed instances. So the list, just like the array list, you know, in that version there's stack in the heap. And notice, notice the stack, I haven't really done anything with it. Uh, but here's the heap. And that list, just like the array list, it's going to create an array, an underlying array, and we'll do five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Again, I made it too big, like so. But its, it's underlying array, instead of being object array, meaning references like this, its underlying array is going to be int uh, array values. Did I call it values up here? I call the items. Okay. Int array values gets new int array and we'll start out with five but the algorithm for the list will allow it to grow as necessary and then we say add five, add thirteen. Well that's the same as saying values just like, just like up here. It's the same as saying this. So let's copy this and paste it down here. Control V. Oops. Control V, and we're going to call this values though. So V A L U E S. I did an Alt. I held down my Alt key and dragged there to make that happen. Anyway, so when I say value sub zero gets five, instead of doing this like boxing thing and putting a value out here and having to reference it, 
Well, no, we, this is a value type. We store the value directly. There's the 5. That is an int. That's not a reference. That's the actual int. All right, same thing with the 13. Let's put the 13 there. That's a 13. Notice no boxing out here. There's no other boxes. Value sub 2 gets 18. Here's the 18. All right, we're storing the values directly. No need to box. Generics replace the T argument for list uh, with the int directly, and we don't have to box anymore. Anyway, so, yeah, when generics came out, everyone was like, oh! And, you know, if I had a dime for every time I had somebody come up to me and say, oh, have you seen this? It's the latest and greatest. Oh, it's so epic. Have you gotten the latest bits? It's like, oh, please, please, yes. Okay, that is cool. But um, I'm not going to you know, ditch my family vacation to go to the conference for it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, bo why boxing is important, why it was really important back in, I think it was 2003, voila.